In this video, you will learn 11 plus non-verbal reasoning type 8, Nets and Cubes, part 3. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to master 11 plus exam techniques to land in your dream grammar school, start right now by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. Now, let's use mop to help us. So M is missing shapes, O is opposite sides and P is pointing directions. Let's start with missing shapes first. So in terms of missing shapes, if you have a look at the cube, we have over here, we have three shapes. We have an arrow, we have a window, and we have a stripy pattern. So these are the three shapes we have. So if we are missing any of these three shapes in one of the nets, then we cross that option off. So let's start with A. In A, we have the arrow, we have the window shape, and we have the stripy pattern. So A is fine, let's move to B. In B, we have the arrow, the window, and the stripy pattern. So B is also fine. In C, we have the window, we have the arrow, and we have the stripy pattern. In D, we have the stripy pattern, we have the arrow, and we have a window. So finally, we have E. In E, we once again have all three of these shapes. So this means we cannot use missing shapes to eliminate any of the options. So as a result, let's cross off missing shapes. Let's move into opposite sides. So in terms of opposite sides, if you have a look at the cube we have right here, you may notice that all three of these shapes are next to each other. And since these shapes are next to each other, this means none of these shapes are actually on opposite sides. Because if a shape is on opposite sides, they will never be next to each other. So according to the opposite sides rule, opposite sides can never be next to each other. So if you have two shapes on opposite sides, and if you fold the cube, that means they will never be next to each other. So as you guys could see, these shapes are next to each other, which means they're not opposite. So what we have to do is that if we find any of these shapes in A, B, C, D, or E, if you find any of them in these five options in opposite sides, then we cross that option off. So let's start with A first. So in A, we have the arrow, we have the window, and we have the stripy pattern. And let's see whether these are on the opposite sides. So the arrow's over here, the stripy pattern's over here, and the window is right here. And since they're all on different color, that means none of them are opposite. If they were to be on the same color, that means they're on opposite sides. But here, we have one in blue, one in green, and one in the red. So that means none of them are opposite. And as a result, we can keep A, and we can move on to B. In B, we have the arrow, we have the stripy pattern, and we have the window. So let's check where they are in terms of opposite sides. So they are right here, here, and here. So as you guys could see, all three of these sides are not opposite because they're different color. So that's also fine. And we can move on to C. So in C, we have the arrow, we have the window, and we have the stripy pattern. So the arrow is over here, the window is over here, and the stripy pattern is right here. Now, we have two of the same color. So we have two shapes on the same color. This means they're on opposite sides. Because they're on the opposite sides, if you fold this cube, they will never be next to each other. So as a result, we can go ahead and cross off C, and we're left with A, B, D, and E. Let's go into D now. So in terms of D, that's the same thing once again. We have no opposite sides, because if you have the arrow, the stripy pattern, and the window, and if you check where they are, they are right here, and they're all on different colors. So as a result, None of them are actually on opposite sides, so you can leave D and we can move on to E. So in E, that's the same case once again. None of them are opposite because we have the stripy pattern, we have the window, and we have the arrow, and they're right here. Stripy pattern, arrow, and the window. And they're all on different color, so we cannot do anything with them. And we're left with A, B, and D, E. So these are the four options we're left with. Let's put a tick next to opposite sides. Now, let's move to pointing directions. So in terms of pointing directions, if we have a look at the arrow we have right here, it's pointing towards this window shape. So this means if we find an option in which the arrow is not pointing towards the window shape and is pointing somewhere else, then we cross it off because we want it to point towards the window shape. If you have a look at A, the arrow is pointing towards the window shape, so that's fine. If you have a look at B, the arrow is pointing towards the stripy pattern, even though it's actually meant to point towards the window, 
So as a result, we can go ahead and cross off B, and we're now left with A, D, and E. Let's check D and E first. So in D, the arrow is pointing towards the stripey pattern, even though it's actually meant to point towards this window. Because it's pointing in the wrong directions, and it's pointing in the wrong shape, we can cross off D. So let's move on to E. The arrow is pointing towards the window, so it's fine. Now, after applying pointing directions, we're still left with two options. If you notice, we still have one thing that's missing in terms of pointing directions, and that is the stripey pattern. If you have a look at the stripey pattern, it's horizontal towards this window shape. But if you have a look at A, the stripey pattern is vertical towards this window shape. So it's basically vertical, even though it's actually meant to be horizontal. Because it's in the wrong direction, we can go ahead and cross off A, and we're left with E. But let's check E just to be sure. So the arrow is pointing towards the window, and the stripey pattern is horizontal to the window. And everything works, so that means our answer to this question is E. The net we got for this question was E, so let's check if E is right by unfolding the cube. And as you guys could see, the net for E is right there. So this means E is our answer. This is an aid for constructing the cube to gain a better understanding of how the net folds in a far more effective way. So the link's in the description below and in the comments section. So go check that out. Now to learn more on nonverbal reasoning types, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous type, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.